Cyborgs remind us of characters that are futuristic in fantasy. He's more machine now than man. But in reality, we're all basically cyborgs. From glasses to smartwatches, we wear and carry and attach a lot of things that supplement or enhance our body's abilities. But there's a growing movement of people who are taking that integration to the next level by implanting everything from magnets to Wi-Fi routers in their bodies. This isn't the kind of thing that you can just do at your doctor's office. So they've come up with their own unofficial and surprising ways to get it done. We went and visited one of the most renowned hacker surgeons in the country who performs these procedures in his garage. Now surgery in someone's garage may sound really cool or really scary, but this is the bleeding edge of body and tech integration. And it's becoming more and more mainstream. Jeff, where the fuck are the screws? <laughs> they should be sitting on the gray case up there to your left, on the uh, sensory depth chamber. Yeah. This is Jeffrey Tibbetts. He goes by Cassex Online. By day, he's a registered nurse. But at home, in his garage, he's a hacker surgeon. This is all biohacking. It's a movement of citizen scientists who are experimenting on their own bodies outside of the traditional lab space. It can take the form of tech implants or self-administering untested medicine or trying to unlock the code of living forever. But Jeffrey identifies as a grinder. Grinding is a subset of the larger biohacking community, which mostly focuses on body modifications and tech implants, like computer chips in people's hands, LED lights in arms, magnets in fingertips, and Bluetooth teeth. Really anything to enhance or change the body's functionality. There's so much variety in terms of what people bring to the community. It's not just people that are like have a have like more of a medical background. It's not people who have a biology background. You know, it's like yeah, we have those people. We also have engineers. We have chemists and material engineers. Wait, we're playing. We got a new game, Jeff. It's called Steal the Magnet from Your Friend's Magnet Implant. Oh shit! <laughs> it's mine now. I describe myself as a cyborg, biohacker, transhumanist. My implants, I had 26 before I arrived here today, and now I have 33. Am I doing my math right? 33. I have 33 implants. Anastasia Sin uses her implants for magic. Anastasia we met her at Jeffrey's where she was getting seven implants. Biohacking exists in a medical and legal gray area, which means it's truly an underground movement. But the community feels like they should have the rights and ability <laughs> to accept that inherent risk and change or modify their bodies how they want. And that's exactly what they do. It just ends up in places like Jeffrey's garage. I can't go to a hospital to get these implants done and I do have to come to my friend's garage, which is probably the coolest garage for making implants a thing that you'll ever see in your life. He's a skilled practitioner in what he's doing and he's a good friend of mine. If you find yourself having a hard time taking this seriously, think about this. We already merge our bodies and technology in a lot of ways. We've just gotten used to it in certain instances. Consider the pacemaker. An early version of the device revived a stillborn child in the 1920s. It was a miracle back then, but it was new and people felt weird about reviving the dead. So research stopped. But over time, public perception shifted. In 1958, the first person was implanted with a pacemaker. He went on to live another 43 years. Today, we don't even think twice about having a pacemaker. It goes to show that our integration with tech is evolving and always incomplete. Biohackers as we know them are now basically playing around in the lab to see what they can come up with next. And while magnet implants or Bluetooth teeth really aren't on the same scale or as life-saving as a pacemaker, these implants are just a stepping stone in this ever-changing landscape. And I thought that was pretty cool. Reporting on the story and watching Jeffrey in his garage really got me curious to know what it was like to get one of these implants. So I decided to jump in the lab with them. All right, so this is what I'm talking about. The webbing here is pretty much the most common place cool. for people to get it, okay. So I did some quick research and landed on this NFC chip, which means near field communication. It means the chip can send and receive information. <laughs> you know, it looks like a pretty big needle. The chip itself is inside of a capsule and gets injected underneath the skin through a hollow needle. The swelling goes down in just a couple days and you're good to go. So I really wasn't sure what I could do with the chip once I got it. Chip Implants 101 seems like a good place to start. So I did some research and found that there's a couple everyday things I could do with it, like 
open a front door, unlock my car, or unlock my computer. But for me, the most useful thing is working with my iPhone. I can scan it and share my contact info, open a website, or share a social network. I even programmed it to FaceTime my mom. Hey, mom. How are you? So weird. Surprisingly, she wasn't really freaked out by my implant. Well, if you keep it on that you can FaceTime your mother, I'm okay with it. <laughs> Does this make me a grinder biohacker now? I don't know, how do you find that? <laughs> this is just my first one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's get some more. Yeah. Jeffrey's work culminates every year with Grindfest, where dozens of biohackers from all over come to Jeffrey's home and test out the latest technology and try out some new implants. You know, it's the, the most incredible thing, more information on our fingertips than ever before, and more people who have no idea how to utilize it than ever before. That's why we're such a teaching community. People come in and, you know, they think, oh, no, no I could just do this and put it in hot glue, or I could do this, and it's like, no, you can't, and let us tell you why. We just try lots of new things. New discoveries are made, and, and last Grindfest we were doing uh, B12 shots on each other, cattle B12 shots. I mean, they give it to cows, it's gotta be okay for people. I mean, you shouldn't just, you know, get drunk and play Scrabble or sing karaoke, you should get drunk and like, you know, inject yourself with some B12. <laughs> It'll probably help you the next day. Most people won't be rushing out to do that, but that's the fundamental idea here. They're pushing at the edges of our perception of what we should and shouldn't do with our bodies. And they're learning a lot in that process. We one by one made all of the mistakes on the way. You know? And so it's like, you now everything else is easy. Yeah, we don't have to keep making mistakes. And, and we can prey upon all of the low-hanging fruit, the stuff that's already been done and researched by people in the medical field. A lot of the stuff that's really cool and then just brought to a slightly you know, different level. You know, that's my take. Yeah. That's about what I got. Yeah. <laughs> cool. That's so cool. I know, but it was fine. I'm sure, as long as you don't have any gangrene on your hand. Okay. <laughs> I don't. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. For even more great content on biohacking, go to our website and subscribe to Freethink for more awesome content every week.